understandably, Roll was scared witless, but there's more. As the blue glow intensified, his mind began to freeze as the monk's energies flowed from the faceless hood. Paralyzed but awake, Roll felt a strange sensation coursing through his veins, as if every ailment and malady in his body was being cured. And sure enough, the next day, he proclaimed he had never felt better in his life. Over in Totnes, researcher Susie Miller visits the local historical society and the assistant, Gareth Pedler, to see if she can find out whether Bowden ever had any connection with monks or a monastery. Well, this is one of the uh, Totnes Priory deeds, dated 1416, and he's then gone on to 1417. Now, on the 14th of December... John Shapwick and Christina, his wife, received licence for an oratory from Bishop Stafford in the chapel of the Holy Trinity within their residence in what's now known as Bowden in the parish of Totnes. So Bowden did have its own chapel, but there's no record of a monastery existing in the grounds of the house. Um, that's the only reference I can find... Of anything religious. Uh, of anything religiously religious structured Bowden. on the building. Mm. No monastery, no, no nunnery. Monastery. We've looked in the Doomsday Book. Nothing, mm. nothing. Ghosts generally are camera shy. They prefer not to reveal themselves to you or me. But no one could have been prepared for what was about to happen next. After three days, strange goings on in a Tudor hall. One of the candles appears to have a life of its own. Guttering candles may not prove anything, but for the ghost hunters, hours of blank screens are about to give way to something genuinely mysterious. Oh my God! What was that? Look. Look! Two team members are dispatched to the oak panel Tudor Hall, a room with just one window. One of the cameras lit by an infrared lamp has picked up strange opaque discs appearing to float at random. Little did the ghost detectives know they were about to become part of something they could not explain. Ghosts are generally camera shy. So when something happens before your eyes and it is caught on camera, oh, that's very rare indeed. The ghost detective's infrared cameras seem to be picking up some kind of activity in the Tudor Hall. Watch the candles. In the control room, the night team are halfway through a 12-hour shift. Oh, my God! What was that? Look! Look! I just floated across the... Look! Do you see it? Look! Oh, God. There's another one, look. Another one. Two members of the team have been dispatched to try to record the floating orbs, which the camera and infrared light are picking up, but are invisible to the naked eye. Okay, it's behind the chair. It's behind the chair. 
It is Alice. I'm so sure. I sent out a message to her. I sent out a really positive message saying, if it is you, please stick around because we're not going to turn our backs on you if we catch you on camera. So I just sent out an energy to her. And I really think it's so playful. It's bounding around everywhere. It's exploring all corners. It's going over to the chair. So perhaps she knows the spirit in the chair. I don't know. Just like electricity all through me, like a palpitation. Totally. Okay, it's behind the chair. It's behind the chair. That's towards the ceiling now. It's above the candlestick. Team leader Andy Matthews joins in with the dousing rods. Okay, what we seem to have here is a number of playful orbs flying around everywhere. It's never been captured before, and hopefully it's going to come out as good as uh, it sounds. But the atmosphere in here is electric. Our whole body head to toe, it's just like pinpricks, like static electricity, something like that, I can't describe it. It's by the candlestick. To the ghost detectives, the orbs seem to be proof of what they've been saying for years. But it would be nice to think that the orbs were either uh, incarnate sp uh, spirits that had previously been on the earth plane or whether they were elemental spirits, what some people call fairies, that sort of spirit, sprites. Um, but I think we've got a lot to prove, and there's a lot of uh, further research required before any conclusions can be made. In the cold light of day, however, will there be a less spiritual explanation? Five hours later, Ross Hemsworth arrives to find out the good news. When I got up this morning, there was a note left for me, which uh, put me in a good mood when I first got up, because it said that Christmas has come early. This was from our night shift team leader, Andy, Andy Matthews. And he said, orbs are plenty, got loads on film, it's all on DV, Christmas has come early. So I came in this morning extremely excited, and certainly the activity's been going on since at least 5.15 this morning, and was still going on when I got up, because I, I know when I rung over to here to see what was going on, Marion said it's still happening. So hopefully we've got several hours of great footage of which at least some is paranormal activity if not all of it so we're going to be watching those tapes fairly shortly and having a good look and seeing if we can rule out all the logical arguments first if we can hopefully our orb theory and our basic soul form will be proved yet further by the end of today so how do you actually go about ruling things in and out well you have to take out the obvious things first if you've got light moving around a room under infrared could it be something like a moth? Could there be flies in the room? Because things will show up brighter than normal. If you've got um, an infrared light on, say, a moth, it won't look like a moth. It'll look like a small ball of light moving across the room. So we have to eliminate those things first. And you can normally tell by speed of movement. Uh, an orb will move across the room quite quickly, whereas a moth will move in a very short juddery movement so we need to do that first having said that i've spoken to robert snow from the ghost club who's working with us th this week uh, robert's seen these things before and, and he's made the point that some of these were far too bright to be something like that they're very bright very illuminated and they were moving at good speed uh, he's an expert in this field and i tend to run with that so i'm quite happy but obviously i need to look at the footage myself uh, and feel happy that it is before i start singing from the rooftops but believe me i think i'm going to be singing later <laughs> However, these could be optical effects with a scientific explanation. Um, quite interesting looking at that. Um, I think, again, my interpretation would be slightly different. I mean, the, the movements that we saw there looked to me, for all the world, like something being buffeted around on air currents that were there in the room. It was interesting that the candle actually flickered out and flickered back on again at one point, suggesting that there were drafts around there. Now, the description of those things that we saw as all